No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we are in here with the one and only Ryan Upchurch. How you doing, man? Good, man. How you doing? Excellent. You know, okay, so I was saying earlier, I'm like, this guy reminds me of like one of the rappers that I cover who's like really from the streets and stuff. And but like the the sort of like other side of that, like the white boy version right. of that. And then when you came in here with a, what is a clearly armed security guard that just kind of <laughs> further cemented that because like that's how it is a lot of times when you interview like these young dudes are from the streets like yeah they probably might have a case so they can't like have a firearm on them but mm -hmm. they have like a trained guy with them or whatever oh for sure so I, i'm very interested to see that that you have uh, security concerns like you're really like hot in these streets like that you know in the wood pile, bro. <laughs> I'm hot in the wood pile. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, okay, the, give me the 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 early stages though. Like, how did you kind of decide that you were going to become a celebrity? And like, or did you want to be a musician or a fucking rap or a, a, a just like an entertainer at first? How Dude, did, what was the process? Honestly, I got kicked out of high school. I started working construction after high school. You know, everybody in the country, bro, if you drop out of high school, if you get out of high school and ain't got a job, you're working with your grandpa, your dad, that shit's getting passed down. You know, you're learning some trades to, like, mm. support yourself, this, that, and the other. And honestly, dude, I just, I've loved rap music from an early age, and especially being from the kind of place I'm from, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, turn that crap off or pull your pants off, you know, or something like that. So you kind of like have to sneak and listen to rap music. You know what I mean? Right. So, you know, I don't know. It's, I don't know, man. It's so just, you felt conflicted about that from an early age? Like you felt. Oh no, I didn't care. Right. But I mean, I, I kind of similar to an extent growing up in New Hampshire, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, to a certain extent and especially, you know, I remember when I went to junior high in like 97, that that was very much like a thing. Like you're not supposed to like rap music <laughs> or whatever. Like the school was very split. There was like the kids who listen to fucking Nirvana and Smashing Pumpkins and Metallica and shit. And then the kids who listen to rap. And it, it was, it was kind of weird for me to be a white kid who was like very, very much interested in rap and also mm -hmm. inter interested in other music you know oh yeah dude growing up in nashville it's definitely a, a huge i'm gonna take this dip out so it don't sound shitty i like it it's like i'm chewing on toilet paper add some flavor that's your <laughs> that's your version of smoking a blunt is that right? you have some oh some no dip. i can smoke a blunt <laughs> <laughs> Doable in the airplane for being too high on the way here. Did you really? Hell yeah, Well, you took an edible or some shit? Fuck yeah. Well, I didn't take one. I took four. Whoa. And my buddy took two. And dude, <laughs> walking past the bomb dog, bro, it looked like he had wooden legs. <laughs> he didn't want to bend his knees. It was hilarious. I don't think the bomb dog is, is sniffing for weed brands. No, though. no. Yeah. We didn't know that, though, at that time. Because yeah. I've only rode airplane like three times. At that time? <laughs> that dog just seems intimidating in general. Super that intimidating. That dog is just a snitch. He'll <laughs> snitch on any kind of criminal behavior. Um, you really only been on a plane three times? Yeah, dude. Are you scared of it or something? No, I love it. Really? Mm -hmm. I love it. I just like I'm like a hobbit, dude. I like staying in my own little county and doing my own little thing. Really? You know? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm friends with people who you know. Uh, who do other things and you know go to these uh, crazy parties like y'all go to and stuff, but I'm just like you know uh, front yard. Chilling with ten homies, kind of thing, you, you know. You're very much like chosen to sort of stay on this yeah. humble path. I'm just, well, I don't know about that. It's just, I just, I get weirded when I leave and go to like these places where I feel like I don't belong. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like I feel like out of place all the time. I feel it. Okay, so wait, you you graduate high school, you start you know learning various trades, sort mm. of like average kind of thing that somebody from your area does after high school, right? Yeah. And uh, but you you loved rap. Mm -hmm. And how do you start to pursue rapping? Or, like, was that the idea? Dude, I sucked so bad when I started, but I was trying so hard. I didn't even care. The first the first album that I ever come across was uh, the Get Rich or Die Trying album. And I was, like, mm. in, like, eighth or ninth grade. And, dude, I listened to that mug so many times. Mm. And... I don't know. I guess it just kind of... Actually, the first album I ever had was a Roy Jones Jr. album because my grandfather used to fight chickens with... Uh, he rapped? Yeah, dude. Roy Jones Jr. He's got some rap shit. Damn, I missed out on yeah. that whole fucking thing. That's interesting. Um, he, but somehow that relates to your grandfather ever, fighting chickens. Yeah, yeah. He, fights, <laughs> he used to fight chickens, yeah. Roy Jones. He's got a picture with Roy Jones Jr. chilling in our yard holding two roosters. 
Oh wow. On my Instagram, yeah. So you don't you don't look down on that behavior at all. Fighting chickens is just normal shit. Uh, to me, growing up where I grew up, dude, a lot of stuff is different. That's what, and that's another thing I'm noticing. You know, as I get further in this career and meet other people, you know, I see myself changing as a person because I'm seeing a lot of stuff that I've never seen before and being exposed to it. But at the same time, you know, how I grew up is how I grew up. You know, right. I can't help that. You know what I'm saying? Like. It is what it is, but it gives me all the traits now to create the kind of music that I do. So, like, w- when I was 19 and I like first went, I went to Amsterdam. Like me and my friends saved up and went to Europe for a week or two, and just seeing like you know the prostitutes in the fucking booths <laughs> on the side of the street, and they got the weed cafes and shit. It was very like eye opening. Like oh, every like all over the world, there's different standards of, mm-hmm. of what's going on in terms of like what's ex- considered acceptable, etc. And so like w- w- the reason why I say that is like you know. Me growing up, I wasn't exposed to cockfighting or dogfighting. <laughs> but, like, I had some rappers on here the other day, and I'm listening to them, and they're clearly talking about dogfighting, and they're mm-hmm. actually making fun of dudes who basically fight pussy-ass dogs. Like, they were, oh, like, shit. basically insulting the quality of their yeah. someone else's dog. So, you know, it's, it's just... You know, see, I could never fight a dog, bro. Dogs are too cool. Chicken, really? yeah, roosters. I mean, you can't eat them. You can't. I mean, you can't cook them and eat them or nothing like that. Mm. Like a rooster's just pretty much all muscle. I mean, literally, you can cut their head off. No, literally, run around for like twenty minutes. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're, you ever done that? Have I cut a chicken's head off? Yeah. Uh, no, but the first time I ever went to a chicken fight was in uh, this place called Hohenwald, and I was probably like 11 years old, and I go out back, and an eight-year-old kid. Was like, hey, he's like, you want so much dip? He had a dead fucking rooster in his hand, and he was banging this rooster's head off this Walmart buggy that they put all the dead roosters in. Yo, keep in mind, I'm 11 years old. I got this eight year old fucking chopping this chicken's head off and trying to give me a dip, and I was like, yo, this is the fucking country, country, bro. Right. And I, I went with my grandfather every time he went. Wow. It was wild to see, dude. It was wild to see. What? You see cops there. You see fucking the judge there, the guy Larry from down the street who works on Azuzu's there. Like, everybody's there fighting chickens, dude. But, but dude, you're talking big money, though. You're talking, right. like, sometimes your motherfucker might win $60,000, fucking $100,000. Like, mm-hmm. these people are fucking making a shit ton of money doing that stuff. Let me ask you this, like... Do you know the way that you grow up and you think that everything that you grew that you grew up around is just normal? And, you know, then at one point it's like every kid has this sort of awakening where they realize what the like perce- the perception of where they're from is. Like being from New Hampshire, I've like kind of had that. Like I, I mm-hmm. left home and then like one of my friends from New York comes to New Hampshire. And, like, just seeing his reaction to it kind of, like, opened my eyes to, like, oh, my God, I am from a really fucking white trash place. And there's a lot of heroin addicts just walking around here because there was, like, junkies all over the place. But I didn't really, as a kid, I didn't realize they were junkies. And then, like, one of my friends comes there and sees it. Anyway, I say all that just to say, when did you sort of, like, realize? Is there a particular moment that comes out in your head that is, like, when you realize, like, oh, I'm a country-ass motherfucker in comparison to most other people? Right, dude. Uh, I don't know. I don't even guess I've really realized it yet. Cause fuck, I mean, this is like one of the first fucking interviews I've done. You know what I mean? Like, like I go other places like Flint, Michigan, and stuff, and I'm like, okay, I'm southern as hell. But you got to think though, everywhere has. How do I say this? Like everywhere has their type of rednecks or something. They're just different. Mm. You know, I mean, th- I tell people that all the time. I'm like, bro, rednecks are just the same as a lot of other people. You just tweak a few things and it's the same exact person, just in a different environment. Right. You know what I mean? Definitely. No, there's, there's rednecks where I grew up now, too. Like, I was, I'll see them, like, posting up the Confederate flag and shit. And I'm like, you're from fucking New Hampshire. Like, be serious. <laughs> like, it's, it's funny because it, to me, it feels like they're appropriating what is actually like your culture. Like, they're they're trying to secede, basically. Like, mm-hmm. but even though they're on the east, I feel you. Uh, yeah, I don't know how. I don't know. I see that a lot, dude. I, I I do go up north and see a lot of Confederate flags and stuff. I mean, obviously, I see them in Tennessee. You know, I'm I'm from the south, but I do see what you're saying. Though you go elsewhere, and it's like people. Um, they they take they take the symbolism and they use it of their own you know whether mm-hmm. it's being rebellious or whether it's you know, whatever anti government or whatever it may be you know I know there's I know there are things attached to it that make people uncomfortable and I do understand that but I also 
like to tell people like, hey man, like, you know, I got that mug at my house. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. My buddy's got it at our house. We're not out saying, you know, we hate this kind of person. We, we want everybody to be open and be, be who they are and not, not be scared to be something that they're not to other people, you mm -hmm. know, cause that what's make, that's what makes the world go around, bro. I, like, I got friends that, you know, they don't support the Confederate flag or nothing like that. Rightfully so, that's their lifestyle, you know, that's cool. But we don't talk about it, we don't argue about it, you know what I'm saying? It ain't one of those things where it's like, I, no, you're, you have to have this mm -hmm. on your truck to be my friend. Like, and I feel like that's what fucking social media has done, dude. But it's weird, yeah, cause social media takes everything to the extreme. Dude. So the, the Confederate flag becomes purely a symbol of racism right whereas like you know down south like i've seen it throughout my life and stuff that there's definitely a lot of people who roll around with that shit on their car yeah. or whatever and that's not what it meant to them but like that kind of perception of it has kind of almost made that the reality where mm -hmm. now if you're a person who wants to roll around with that on your truck you know that everybody's going to perceive it that way at this maybe not where right. you're from but around you know well here, no maybe. where i'm from too though where i'm from too like it, you know everywhere you know it's it's the person to me it's man i'm one of the people like i'm not gonna sit here and say a bunch of stuff unless i meet somebody and when i meet somebody then i'll make i'll make my judgment of them that's kind of how i am you know right. it, but with the media and shit these days it just really really encourages everybody to think of everybody else as being where they're from Mm -hmm. what they believe if you if you know one opinion of a person like if you know that person <laughs> doesn't support abortion then you can just fill in the blanks of every other thing that mm. you assume that they believe too it's like you know that's kind of like what has become of our society in a lot of ways yeah. it's weird but see i mean even then though you know somebody like myself who has uh, however many followers i don't know but you know when people ask me something I, I want to make about the Confederate flag or something like that, I always make it a point to be like, yo, I'll answer your question. Like, let me, the guy who's holding it and the guy who has a tattoo on him, let me answer your question. I got you. Because mm. I'm not going to be like, no, fuck you. You don't like it. Then get the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'd rather be like, yo, let me understand where you're coming from. And then let me tell you where I'm coming from so we can, you know, show anybody who's watching this video, like, bro, we can look past that and we can be one because mm. we're going to need to be one eventually you know what i mean like we can't keep sep we can't keep adding stuff to the pot to separate us uh separate us as a society because once dude i'd, I'd rather have one whole super gang you know mm. of american motherfuckers that understand each other that which is almost impossible <laughs> than to have like you know a million groups that all hate each other yeah you know what i'm saying that's why i think gets lost in it a lot is that it's like in the quest for equality a lot of it feels like people forgot about like the idea that the ideal is for everybody to just get along mm -hmm. and sometimes that almost seems like it's kind of been like forgotten about <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude seriously man oh my gosh definitely okay wait so do you start rapping how do you go about starting to rap or like getting any kind of involvement in this and like when do, and how long does it take before you start getting some traction <sighs> Well, 12th grade, I started doing it with, uh, you know, this little producer dude that had a closet in town. And then we ended up having a falling out. He deleted all my shit. I, I recorded like 30 songs. They all suck, though, so it doesn't really matter. Right. <laughs> and uh, I got out of high school or dropped out or whatever. And then uh, about four years go by. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to take some of my money that I'm making from doing this, and I'm going to try to do music. And the first album, Cheatham County, like, it wasn't like a masterpiece or nothing but it was like yo it, it gave people the like who the fuck is this dude like how do you go about getting it out there oh bro facebook really yeah I, I you know i didn't have like a team or nothing i've never been signed to a label no, nothing like that um i had a couple people that i made friends with along the way that give me good tools and contacts like yo hey this guy right here can record you for x amount of dollars uh -huh. and he's only open this time so you got to go here da, 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 da. and i went through some sketchy shit dude like i <laughs> i i've recorded at some places that was like yo what the fuck like watch two guys shoot at each other in antioch one time you know arguing after we just left the studio and i was like yo this is not the vibes bro like uh wow. i ain't trying to watch these two guys shoot at each other while i'm trying to record inside you know what i mean see you are he's, he's a gangster rapper i'm telling you no 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 i'm not a gangster i'm a straight country boy bro but hey the shootouts <laughs> that's where it happens at the studio quite well, often the, well then i ended up getting hooked up with some of uh young bucks people shortly after that uh um, shout out young buck 
<laughs> Friend of the podcast. Great yeah. guy. Great guy. Yeah, rapper. dude. Oh, bro. Uh, growing up around Nashville, if you didn't hear Young Bucks music, you weren't mm. listening for rap music. But right. um, anyway, met up with a couple of his people. Um, what was their names? Band Play. He's done some stuff for, I think, B. He's done some stuff for Young Dolph. Was it? Yeah, Young Dolph. I've done some stuff with Band Play and then branched off from there, outgrew that. And then ended up meeting this guy named Stoner, and we've been working ever since. Mm. You know, just dabbling with whatever, country music, rock music, rap music. Uh, it's just kind of like whatever I wake up and feel like that morning, to be mm. honest. I mean, grew up around Nashville. It's like a melting pot of music anyway. Right. Who, you know? who influenced you to sort of like mix country and rap together? Because it feels like that is like it's a whole just growing thing up that's in sort it. of, yeah, just because you, you just grew up listening to country and rap at the same time. Yeah. So you, but it felt like there's been... Like, not that many people have the, the gall to really try to mix it together until the last few years. Well, see, that's the thing. Like, it wasn't one of those things where I was like, hey, I got an idea. I think everyone's going to love it. It was like, hey, I'm about to rap on some shit, and if they don't like it, fuck it. If they do, hell yeah. And I just kind of did it. And I, honestly, I've had a lot of people ask me. They've been like, oh, well, how, uh, how long till y'all got the formula right, this, that, and the other? No, nothing. We've just been winging it. Like, what? I, that's all I know how to talk about. Like, I, I'm not going to get on here and be like, yeah, you know, bitches, drugs, and drug dealing. Like, I don't know nothing about that. Right. But I know about country shit, so <laughs> I just rap about country shit. Right. You know? And so did you automatically just feel like you got a crazy reaction from people who maybe were looking for that kind of content and didn't necessarily have that much of, the, you know, there wasn't as much of that stuff out there? Or? People was already getting that. Oh, now, 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 country rappers have been around for a long time. Like I, some people I see as country country rappers, oh God, it's such a it's such a weird thing because to me, it's just rappers that are from the country, right. you know? But you, you do have a section of people that are like, ah, country rap. Let me put on some overalls and eat a tomato and I, we're gonna make some money. I have seen a lot <laughs> of rappers who like kind of made a swing at being a gangster rapper and it didn't work. And then a few years later, they're like throwing on some overalls <laughs> and they're like, they got a whole different style. And I'm kind of like, wow, this, this, is, this is interesting. Was this you the whole time? Like yeah, you just yeah. kind of forgot about this side of your personality till now? Okay. Oh yeah, we, and, and people, there's a select few country rappers that are for real some country motherfuckers that are rapping. And then you have the other one we just talked about, you know, the look at me, I have a tomato. Mm. I caught a fish once, you know, <laughs> you, you have those kind. But uh, yeah, p people definitely know the difference. But um, shit, dude, I got sidetracked. <laughs> um, yeah, just I don't know what like what that fan base wants from you. OK, so like like we were saying before, it's it's been a thing for a minute, but to but to people in these rural, rural areas. Like, to me, when, I, when someone says, Who, who's a country dude who's a rapper? I'm going to say Plies. I'm going to say, uh, you know, Young Jeezy, Yo Gotti. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, Kevin Gates. I mean, they're from, they're from real southern areas. So mm -hmm. to me, when I, when I think of uh, rap music coming from a country dude, I also think about those people, but some don't. So when I come in, Nashville was already uh, already jumping on this whole country rap thing. Mm. But it was just like, it, was, it I would not bump it in my truck at a party. You know what I mean? Mm. Because it was like, hmm, let's, let's pour just a, a good amount of this and a good amount of this, and let's just dabble them up a little bit and fucking set them on a four-wheeler and fucking let's shoot a video. When all of us are out here wilding out in the street, fucking riding boys down the street at 60 miles an hour, we're like, yo, they're lying. They're really right. not doing this shit. And, and the fans know. The fans know when you're bullshitting, and they know when you're not bullshitting. And if they see something, especially in country rap, if they see something and they're like, yo, that ain't fucking real. That ain't their four-wheeler. They can't start that motherfucker. They ain't finna ride it. What they're saying is just the same shit everybody else is saying. In a country fan base, you better say some lyrics where these motherfuckers really know you're out here doing this shit. Otherwise, they're not gonna listen to you. Mm. You know what I mean? Like it's the same with it was same with rap music. You know, uh, you got people that are hella respected, like Fifty, uh, you know, like Dolphin shit. But they're doing and they've done what they're saying they're doing mm. in their songs. You know what I mean? They're not just out here bullshitting. So you ever think about doing that? You ever think about just going shooting at somebody? Fuck <laughs> no. Have fuck your no. homie film it and that's like, no, you know, no. you can just come Unless up. Unless they're that. messing with my mama or my brothers. Mm. Like, we're good. I, I'm I'm using my prison pass one time, bro, and it better be for somebody I love, mm. not just for no reason. Do you have a prison pass? Is that how that works? Well, dude, <laughs> it, it ain't a pass, but I look at it like this. I've already done everything I want. 
uh, I've already accomplished everything I want as of right now. And I would, I would, I'm not out here like waving guns on Instagram. I would never shoot nobody or nothing for no fucking reason or no street cred or nothing. But somebody done something to my mom or my brothers, I probably would. Yeah. Straight up. Got it. Free body. <laughs> it's um, worth it to me. <laughs> um, okay. But have, have you always like, integrated your you know social media type personality and like your willingness to just get on camera and rant and ramble and shit has that always kind of been a part of your brand along with just making music it feels well, like they're kind of like one doesn't go without the other with you america loves seeing chaos and they love seeing people bitch yeah. about stuff but the music is separate like i'm i'm super serious about the music the videos and stuff they're fun and stuff it's just you know i do dumb little shit like that get engagement you know make people laugh make people mad <laughs> that i want to make mad so we can back and forth on youtube or something like that but the music is totally separate i, I i'm a different person when it comes to music especially when it comes to what whatever genre i'm doing that mm. that month or whatever interesting uh, rock music's probably the most different and um i have to get into a certain mindset to write my rock stuff really yeah do you like in the studio with a band and shit or like, uh, how do you do that we we have a lot of different players and stuff um depending on what sound we're going for mm. uh, on this last uh rock album creaker 2 i did nothing but listen to um you know allison chains uh pretty much just allison chains to be honest like really yeah like I, I i'll go through their whole entire catalog and get into this certain mindset then i'll write some rock stuff but i have to uh, surround myself like with what i want to do in music that month and when i do it i'll do it to the extreme like really? surround myself with whatever do you okay how prolific are you though like when you go in the studio how long does it take you to make a song and like how long does it take you to make a project and are you making like a million songs for one project or you just make like the amount that you need and then you do it i'll make like 10 songs i'll go through most of the time, 90% of the time, those will be the 10 songs that go on the album. Whatever ones come off my head first. Every once in a blue moon, I'll take one out and I'll read and I'll do something else and slide it in. That's about it. Right. Rap songs, I could go in. Um, I've done, I've recorded the whole rap album in two weeks before. Right. I've done collaboration albums in less than seven days. Um, country albums, mm, I'll probably write for like three months on those because the, the country scene is the trickiest, if you ask me. Trickiest how? Trickiest like um, getting people to getting people to engage in country music. I feel like is a little bit more difficult. Like when you put out a video of a country song, it's harder to get momentum going, or what? Oh no, 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 no! I'm just talking about the living in Nashville, the songwriting process. Oh, like okay. getting other people to be like, "Yo, that's a really good song." Because you got so many people writing at the same time, writing for so many people. Like, each artist could have fucking eight writers right. or whatever. And I'm writing all of them myself. So I kind of beat myself up the most on country music because I want it to be perfect. I, I, I want it to be, it's like a music baby. And like mm. every, and since I live there, I want to make sure my country music is the best you know, when, I, when I'm writing it. So what do you feel like you're bringing to the table that makes your shit stand out aside from like your personality and the fact that you're very like raw and uncut compared to like the average country star probably but like what <laughs> from your perspective what do you bring to the table that like that you want to do honestly, better than other people Honestly it's just kind of like taunting right now but people people take it as taunting people take it as you can take it as whatever you want but honestly dude the god's honest truth bro is that I get so angry that I see these young dudes move to Nashville, hang out, barely getting by on mm -hmm. the street corner for fucking three, four years while these big rich motherfuckers put all this stuff in their ear to make them like stick around and stay. And you never know, they could write one song, two songs. They have this whole dream when they come to Nashville and it's all shit on because it's, it's a club, dude. I really? know, because I know motherfuckers in the club. Like, like they won't let people in. Uh, right, but right. And, and, it's just they give a lot of false hope. So I'm the guy who's like, yo, fuck it. Go do it yourself. Uh, find you a camera guy. You know, if you really are in love with music, then you'll prosper. If you're not, then it, you have to be 100% though the, uh, the whole time, especially as an independent artist. You have to be 100%. You can't 99.9% .9 believe in yourself and then that 1% you don't believe in yourself because that's going to fuck you all up. Like you have to have so much self-confidence that nobody can tell you shit. 
if you're an independent artist. But so that's interesting because like in rap music, we're very much used to like, you know, rappers. Basically, you have to make your own wave. Like you have right. to get popular on your own. That's kind of the norm is that we expect people to, uh, you know, start getting popular on their own. And then the label swoops in and starts to, you know, incubate them and, and help take over their career. Mm -hmm. Whereas I guess, yeah, I would assume that in country it's more like, couldn't go without the dip for long, huh? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, That's why I just had to go buy new teeth. <laughs> are you? Those are new? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're already stained up, ain't they? What? They don't look like veneers, though, are they? Uh, no, they're the fucking. They grind your teeth down like little shark teeth. Yeah. And then... That's what those are. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, they look very natural. Thanks. Damn. Nashville, baby, Nashville. <laughs> but okay, yeah, I, I would assume that like a lot of country stars are sort of like you know brought up like by the labels from from go is it really difficult to be somebody like you who's like <laughs> doing it all independently yeah especially like I, and I, i'm not gonna lie i should talk them while i do it <laughs> yeah because dude it's just it's people do their little stabs you know how people do uh. you know there's the little things that are said and little moves that are made that they they fuck with you without having to openly fuck with you. Right. You know what I mean? And as soon as they do it to me, I'll, up to, I'll, I'll tell everybody. And that's the thing. That's what's made people standoffish from me. It's what, made, it's what made people like me also, though. Like, it's not like Nashville doesn't don't give me credit. I, I think it's the, it's the, the big wigs that know I'm talking to them because I've been in their offices. Like, for instance, um, I got... I had a meeting with Big Machine Records uh -huh. in Nashville. Scott Bruschetta, he owns owns Big Machine, or just he just like dueled up with Scooter. Bron uh, what's his name? Right, uh, Scooter, Scooter Braun. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So I had a meeting with them about signing to Big Machine, and when I got in there, I fucking I play stupid. I look the part. I can play the part. I go in there. I play stupid. And, dude, I carried this on for, like, four days. They gave me free liquor. They gave me a free flying V guitar. They gave me all this shit. Like, and knowingly, like, knowingly I'm going to say no afterwards. Right. I just get all this free shit and then tell them no. But, but I, I wanted to get the contract in my hands so I could read it thoroughly and show other people. Not only did I, was I able to get the contract, I actually got Scott Bruschetta to sign it. So I could write whatever I wanted on it and frame it in my studio. So I have wow. it in my studio, <laughs> and it's a big machine uh, record deal. And that's like, I like collecting stuff like that. But <laughs> this is a strange thing that you're saying right here. This is pretty out there. But, yo, know, like, so you went into this whole situation knowing that you weren't going to sign or, like, you yeah. just you knew off top that there was nothing that they could offer you that yeah. would make you interested? Why is that? Because if you own 100% of your masters on 13, Billboard charting albums As soon as you sign with one of them First off they're going to be like Okay well we want your back, a little bit of your back catalog And we want more of your new catalogs That we're going to make Fuck <laughs> that My back catalog is going to make me more money in one year Than them motherfuckers going to make me in two years Because they're going to take half the money Right. Country music is different in that way I, I See I'm not sure the business side On the rap side But I do know the business side on the country side Because I grew up in Music City right. So well, where's the money at? Is it the performances or is it the streaming or? Dude, as an independent artist, bro, it's all of it. Yeah. All of it. Because, dude, if you're getting 100% of everything, dude, fuck, dude. Mm. I mean, you don't even have to do that good to, to live comfortably. Right. Like, I, I could have I could have been totally content with 2016 me. And I was living in a trailer with my family, but all my bills was paid. It was my trailer, you know what I'm saying? Right. I think it's that. I think what fucks a lot of young artists up is uh, is th they want more. They want more right now. Right now, want more, want more. Label gives it gives you money. You go in debt. You spend more money. You're spending money on all this other shit, music videos, this, that, and the other. And by the time it's over with, you're fucking two hundred thousand dollars in debt to your label, and you're like, shit. Right. How am I gonna pay these motherfuckers back? Well, should have bought some land, dude. But isn't there <laughs> is there part of you though that wants to be that superstar that presumably only the label could? make you you know like to like that is what the label is good for i think in large part is that they could turn people into actual superstars and that that like no matter how popular you are as an independent artist and you can make millions of dollars that that is there there is a level that you might just never be able to do on your own here's my thing with that with that it ain't no fun if you already know what's gonna happen if you already know what's gonna happen how fun can it be right if you're doing it yourself and you're just winging it and you go through all these weird situations, 
dude, that's the story at the end. Mm. You know? And also, if you sign with the label, like, they'll they'll tell you that they'll, they're going to be able to make you a number one star and everything, but there's absolutely no certainty <laughs> about that. Like, they fuck up all the time, yeah. Bro, I've had homies downtown Nashville be like, dude, uh, uh, you know, I signed this pub deal or whatever, or I signed it with so and so deal, and I went down there for a photo shoot, and this bimbo bitch coming here was trying to make me wear a polka dot dress. Like, you never know what you're gonna hear, dude. They try to make me wear a Hawaiian shirt and stand in front of a fucking plastic palm tree. I'm like, bro, we're in Nashville. There's no <laughs> palm trees around here. Right. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Yeah, dude, you gotta let people, b dude, that, and that's that's the beauty of ind independent music. Like, you never know what you're gonna get from nobody. Like somebody I like, I like following from time to time. I used to follow a lot when I was younger. Is Hobson. Right. You never know what the fuck Hobson's gonna do. He might be in the desert. He might be chilling in the Congo, fucking playing with some <laughs> fucking air darts. You never know what Hobson's doing, but that's what I love about him. <laughs> right. Yeah. No. Definitely. Um, so. Are there other people comparable to you, like, in the country world or just doing, like, their purely, like, indie things slash, like, YouTube star thing? Dude, I'm going to be 100% real with you. Are you kind of the king of the shit? <laughs> no, I'm not the king of the shit. But I know you're going to think I'm lying, but I don't pay attention to nobody. Really? Mm -mm. It, fucks, it fucks up your creative, creative mind. Interesting. I don't really watch TV no more. Uh, you know, I, I make sure that I keep listening to new music a lot. Mm. Like even new people that are coming up, anybody, because I, I want to see what's going on in music in general. But when it comes to you know who's flashing this amount of money, who's doing this, you know whatever, I'm I couldn't fucking tell you shit. I right. can't tell you nothing. Really? Mm -mm. But it keeps your creative. It keeps my personally. It keeps my creative mind way open to where I can jump from four different kinds of music that are totally different from each other. You Interesting. Know? I guess there's a lot of stuff you could potentially be paying attention to there, huh? Yeah, there, I mean, there's a lot of shit, but. Right now, I just I I like to lock on to weird shit, mm. and just like you know, listen to that or follow that for a minute and then jump. I don't really like staying in the drama because the drama just puts you it sets you back so far. Drama's good sometimes when it makes sense, but when when you got when you're you know on the, if you come out with an album and it's in the top ten, and you got you know ten SoundCloud rappers that or you know that are not SoundCloud rappers, but if you got ten rappers that are Really have no following, be like, hey, fuck you, fuck you. I'm not mm -hmm. gonna be like, oh, let me dish this guy. That used to be me, but it's it's just a waste of time now because you got it's like zombies. Are a lot of people trying to use you for a come up like that? Like they want to fucking Dude. mention you and use you for clickbait and whatnot. Bro, I've had quite a few right. rappers do that. Some known more than others. Some not known at all. It just depends on who it is. I think the I think the one who I've been into it with who has the most credibility I, I don't know even if he's like a, a big rapper or what is screwface john screwface g one of yeah the youtube guy like I, I had a major major beef with him we went back and forth and really yeah it ended pretty good for me <laughs> ended up good how i don't know him i, gotta Bro, him I, I gained some of his fans i didn't lose none <laughs> really he lost a lot not me though i mean but he came in it all wrong though. It, he was he come in being like, and listen, listen, I'm I'm not gonna pull up to the block and spit you a fucking bunch of bars or nothing like that. But it, you know, if something comes my way, I'm about to write fast as shit. You know what I mean? That's the kind of person I am. You know, I'm not a freestyler, can't freestyle, but I love writing. I love getting under people's skin. Mm. You know, that's my favorite thing to do, and that's what I did to him. And it backfired on him because he made a whole entire song about racism and tried to call it a diss song and then all of his fans were like yo fuck you that ain't good enough uh, you didn't even do your homework on this upchurch guy da, 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 da. he was calling you racist <laughs> yeah really yeah i told him what i told him back it up dude like i've been on the internet for six years i'm pretty sure i've said something somewhere if, if you're if you're racist people know you know because you'll slip up and say some shit and be like oh it was an accident <laughs> well really it's not an accident really that's how you're thinking it just slipped out of your fucking mouth you know what i mean right. like so when i come at him like that like Okay, if I am, show me. Great. I'd love to look at it. You know what I mean? But it's just he he went off of the the political beef uh. instead of actually diving into who I was. I went in and picked apart this motherfucker from his toenails to his hair. I don't give a shit. Like <laughs> I'm gonna know everything. I wish I knew more about this. I gotta investigate this beef. <laughs> um, so wait, so do you like what? What's your actual day to day life like though? Do you just feel like very much content to like keep a very very normal? life 
Seems like that's kind of your. Ethos. I like. Well, I like the madness too, though. Really. I just like evening it out. I don't What's like the madness? Bro, dude, we've started. I've started riots on accident. Riots. Yeah, dude, I've been on the news like three times for crazy shit like that. One time, uh, where was that place where the uh, the two fullers collided? Don't you ain't got to say his name, but where? It was in Kentucky. So I'm about to go on stage, right? Colt Ford just got Colt Ford just got off stage, right? Yeah, Colt Ford got off stage. And I'm about to go on stage. Well, Colt Ford comes up to me. He's like, yo, this place is fucking weird. Mm. He's like, I was just on stage. People was climbing up behind me on stage, like jumping around with me and shit. And I was like, I ain't having all that. So I already was like, okay, I'm a little sketchy. Well, we start to go down there for the show, and they're just letting people run wild on four-wheelers and shit, which is fine. You know, but these two people had a head-on collision and fucking cracked skulls with each other. And one of them, if I'm not mistaken, was, like, in the ditch, like, having a seizure and shit. And then one of the security guards, some <laughs> security guards, was like, oh, we'll pick her up and put her in the back of the cast. And they were like, yo, don't pick her up. Her back might be fucking broken. Right. So then they're trying to call this helicopter in to lifelight this lady who had a wreck. About that time, I'm, I'm supposed to be going on stage. Well... Then they start shooting off fireworks and shit, so the helicopter can't land. I'm assuming this is like an outdoor venue because yeah, yeah. you're describing the four wheelers yeah, yeah. smashing into each other. It's on okay. a big I'm trying fucking to paint farm. The picture in yeah, my yeah, head. it's yeah, on a okay. big farm, bro. And uh, long story short, they started shooting fireworks, so the helicopter couldn't land. So I got on stage and I was like, "Y'all fucking suck. <laughs> this whole fucking venue sucks. Y'all don't know how to do shit. I'm fucking leaving." So I went to leave and. All hell broke loose, dude. They were trying to run him over with a four-wheeler or a truck, trying to run him over. Fucking this big dude was like, I'm going to fuck you up. I the was fans like, were pissed. Uh, were they actual genuine fans of yours, or uh, were they more well, just people was, who were there? Now, the fans in the crowd were like, yo, there's a bad thing going on over here, and this helicopter's trying to land. I think the people who were more pissed was the staff and the friends of the staff because it was some chick's birthday. This was her birthday party, and I fucked it all up. She said I spit in her face, bro. I would never spit in a girl's face. And, like, I have all this shit on. Uh, they had all this shit, like, documented. Like, Yellow Wolf's people was there. Uh, Yellow Wolf's mom got hit in the head with a bottle. What the and fuck? then all Yellow Wolf's mama people, like, pulled out guns on these motherfuckers. <laughs> wow. Yellow Wolf's mom. Protect her at all costs. Um, Shout out to Mama Wolf. <laughs> wait, so is that an average show for you? I was going to ask, no. like, what, what is your touring schedule like and how often and, like, how many people do you play to and what are the shows like? They sound, I'm assuming they're not usually like that. No, no. Usually they're fucking, they're super perfect. The vibe's great. All kind of different kind of people come. Redneck people, not redneck people, gangster people, chicks with fucking gauges, you know, <laughs> all kind of stuff. And it's usually just, man, my fan base is real, like, fa I try to make it family-oriented, right. you know? That's why I call I call all my fans, I call them skins. And people are like, yo, what the hell skins mean? Because, you know, it obviously sounds, I've had some people be like, yo, what does that mean? Because you're white and you're saying skins. <laughs> but, dude, skin. Like, everybody has to have skin. We're not, we don't get to choose what color we come here in, but it, th that don't matter. We can all still be one and listen to this fucking music and jam out and have a good ass time and go home with some memories and some new buddies mm. you know what i mean how long you perform for oh like what an hour and 35 minutes yeah about an hour and 35 with a whole live band and everything yeah. mm -hmm. that's dope we rage dude how many like openers would you have on average uh well like to paint two the picture. Yeah, like two openers. And they're ones that you bring with you, or is it just different in every city? Uh, sometimes it's, uh, well, is it people in the city now? I don't think it is now. Now we bring them. We have, uh, we have a, uh, a girl that sings country music, Carly Rogers, and then we have my little homeboy from down the street, Leroy Biggs, does rap music. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you try to switch it up so you kind of have different stuff all coming together. Yeah, yeah. You know, trying to, well, not only that, I try to help people that, that I think have a real good interest in music and are trying to get somewhere instead of, being like, well, you can go downtown and find a label. Mm. Uh, well, you can come with me on my show or at one of my shows and show people your music, see if they like it or not. You know right. what I mean? No strings attached. Do you uh, have fans who like prefer one style of music over the other? You have fans who are like just purely the country fans and they like could really give a fuck less about the rap shit. Oh yeah, dude. I have some that are solely country, some that are solely rap, some that are solely rock, some that fuck with all of it. You know, that's. Partially why I think it's gotten so big to where it's at, just because I do so many different things. Interesting. Um, so 
one thing that like I saw like a deleted video re-upload, I believe, <laughs> of you basically just taking like some relationship drama that you were on. I don't know if this happens a lot or if this is just like a once in a blue moon <laughs> thing. But you were raging out about Bro. like some drama that you had with this girl. And uh I mean it was, a, it was an exhilarating watch. I totally enjoyed it. But uh <laughs> like you I know, got tricked, boys. Yeah, what 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 is it that like do you consider that an important part of your whole like public identity that you're willing to just take your relationship shit and just air it out like that? Because people love that shit, bro. You have to, especially today. I mean, bro, you think about it, dude. I could, I could fake a text message from you and be like, "Look, he told me, fuck me after I left." Like, mm. like you know, there's so many things you can do now to twist stuff. I would rather come out and be like, "Hey, this fucking bitch tried to say this," and I want to let y'all know. Here's all the proof to set the other. Because no matter what. The, the consumer of whatever you're doing, they'll get to the bottom of it, bro. Mm. What doesn't come out in the wash will come out in the rants, as one of my buddies always says. <laughs> and that's the truth. If you lie once, you're going to have to lie eight times to cover up that lie. And then somebody's going to find out you're lying. And by that time, you're already lying about something else. Fuck it. Just come out and say it. If you're not a bad person, you ain't got nothing to worry about. If you won't do nothing weird or nothing like that, you ain't got nothing to worry about. So why not get up there and be like, hey, that bitch is a fucking liar. Mm. Here's all the proof. Where's her proof? And then what does she do? I, I wake up and notice she's fucking gone out of my bed. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Maybe she's like going down to the store to get sausage and biscuits or some shit. I don't fucking know. So I call her and she's like, yeah, um, uh, I'm super pissed. You grabbed my titty. I'm like, yo, we just made a freaking hit country song about fucking like. Was she was I, sleeping I, in the same bed with you. I'm assuming that you had it bro, slept we, with her at this point. You can't grab a boob. Bro, exactly, it, dude. It sounded like a crazy thing. You know, how, you know thing. how guys are, dude? That's like our fucking adult teddy bear. We'd be gr rolling over and grabbing a boob, dude. This is what we do. I could just never imagine my girl being like, you touched my boob how in my sleep. You? Like, what the fuck does she care? You scratched my ur urola or whatever the fuck it's called. Areola? Yeah, fuck <laughs> it. yeah. You scratched my areola. I'm telling Facebook about it. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I don't even know who the girl is. Didn't bother to look into it to that extent, but... Um, you ain't missing shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you... Uh, Okay, you, you start to get famous and stuff. Like, have you had the problem of like fucking too many girls, like just indulging too much in all the asses available to you? Or have you like kind of stay on the relationship tip slash you, do you deal with the issues with like fucking people that are fans of you and shit? Is that what happened with this girl to some extent? Well, actually, I've known her for a minute and I, I actually knew she was a lesbian. I was just being a dumb male and I was like, oh, look, I'm turning this girl not gay. Like, this is great for my, for my resume. <laughs> you know and then it fucking backfires and you're like, well, shit, she's lesbian again. Here we go. Right. I fucked up. Right. But uh, no, nah, man, uh, I'm married to motherfucking music bro like i'm i'm so dedicated with music i have to have somebody companion wise with me that will let me be at the studio a long time mm. that will let me sit in my room and write for hours like if you can't do that I, I don't care i don't care if you got the biggest ass and the biggest boobs in the world if you won't let me go to my room and write music i don't fuck with you get out of my house mm. like I know a lot of young dudes focus i mean don't get me wrong i'm i like i like boobies and shit too but but I'm more focused Apparently on... Apparently, you grab them in their the <laughs> sleep, bro. Yeah, yeah Facebook Just groping knows. motherfuckers, yeah. Shh, I'm going to grab yours in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, right now I'm focused on my music, dude. Right. That's what I'm focused on. No, if you want to be creative or whatever, that's, like, the number one. If you're that type of person, entertainer, or a person who, like, creates content or something, that's one of the biggest things that you're going to have to, like, make sure you get out of the way with a girl from step one is that they need to be able to respect the space that you need to be able to be creative and stuff. And a lot of people with a regular right. ass job, they can't really like comprehend the fact that you don't go into the office every day, but that you have to work. Right. And, and there's a weird relationship thing with, you know, maybe sometimes they don't see it as work. They're like, well, you're not working. You're on the couch. It's like, yeah, but motherfucker, I'm writing my next album is supposed to come out in three months, you know? Yeah. Like, and not only that, it's meeting the wrong people. Now, now does does this chick like you because you like to go fucking hiking and see cool shit, or is she with you because you got a hundred thousand likes on your last shit on Instagram? You know, mm. that's the world we also live in too. So you got to look at everybody's a fucking liar. Yeah. Not only that, dude. You and if you're young and any type of popping, and you're out here and you are fucking all these bitches, bro. You 
you're just you're gonna be in trouble. Probably. You're rolling the dice. Yeah, you're definitely rolling the dice, dude. These people don't get half. These chicks don't give a fuck about you, bro. Mm. They're gonna get on there and say anything. Take it from somebody who's had it done to them. They're gonna say whatever they can to get them fucking followers up, dude. Right. Just saying. Some of them ain't like that, but some of them are. When you, like, embarked on this whole, like, career as a public person, though, like, did you, if you had to do it again, would you have done it? Or is there some extent to which, like, not being able to be anonymous and not being able to just be a guy going to the bar, that the fact that you can't do all those things like you used to, like, does that bother you in any way? Mm-mm. No. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's my whole thing. If, if I know what's going to happen, it's boring. If you don't know what's going to happen, it's exhilarating every single minute of it. Even falling off, dude. Even falling off. I mean, you know, some people get scared of it. Well, if you start falling off, you just got to work a little harder. You anxious not. about that at all? You think about it? I, see, that's the thing. It don't bother me. Right. Because of what I come from, you mm. know? Um, and like I said maybe 20 minutes ago, I've already, I've already accomplished everything that I thought I couldn't accomplish. Everything now is just extra. So it makes me want to work even harder. Mm. So... It is what it is. I mean, everybody's got to fall off sometime, dude. You can't. We can't be rapping when we're ninety and on oxygen. You know what I'm saying? Right. Sometimes we got to give it up. But a lot of artists don't know when their time is up. And I'm I'm learning that living in Nashville. I'm like, yo, I don't I don't want to be like some of these people, dude. Right. Like, you know, they're out of shape as fuck. You know, right now they should be, you know, starting their own booking company or finding the new talent coming up or something, but they're just still hanging on to that. I'm a superstar. Like, dude, it's going to be over one day and, and you better be ready for the next stage. And, and as somebody who has any light in the music industry, you better be soaking up all that knowledge. It's cool to do drugs and have fun and fucking party, but you got to even it out with soaking in this knowledge too because you're going to need it one day to run your own company if you want to stay in music right otherwise you're just gonna be some asshole fucking artist pulling 20 people to a show trying to sing your old song from 20 years ago right what what kind of exit plans have you considered in terms of like things that you might do as you get older and shit like that like what what stands out to you man i mean i've already started with my boy chad with a uh, you know booking company mm. um me and Beelus have a, a, a great relationship with everything we've built. Um, I want to get into acting. Uh, I want to get into uh, uh, racing, like racing vehicles. Really? Yeah. Um, there's a, dude, that's the thing. Like, I could wake up and want to do, like, eight things. Right. Like, it don't matter. I'm one of the people. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be moving, doing something until I'm dead. Definitely. I don't care what it is. It's going to be something. Have you? Are, are you, like, ambitious in terms of doing music with more like mainstream rappers as well hell yeah dude i'm I just picturing you with little baby on a song and just like the baby with your, oh little baby little oh baby. okay <laughs> <laughs> the baby too yeah <laughs> you can't mix those up we already seen that on youtube I'm you just, see that I, video I, no where the dude comes oh, up to his yeah, window yeah. and uh he's like man fuck you and rolls the window up right, on him <laughs> yeah, yeah okay <laughs> that was no, pretty no. cool there's a lot of like that's always like a consistently viral thing is that like somebody will come up to like you know famous Dex and be like hey Lil Uzi and like you know, <laughs> yeah. always or like some girl will take a photo with him and be like I, I met the Migos yeah and it's just some guy yeah I've, I've done I've done stuff recently with really big artists in country but dude I haven't done have I done any features in rap really at all no huh I mean, I have a few here and there. I got one with Yellow Wolf. I got a few mm. with some other people, but it's like nothing like that we all promoted and was like, oh, look at this. You know what I mean? It would be kind of crazy if you like found the right fucking look to do in terms of like that sort of thing. I want to hang out with some crazy rappers, dude. Some mm. people who ride fucking dirt bikes down the street and shit. Yeah. That's what I want to hang out with. You should go hang out with NBA Youngboy for sure. NBA Youngboy? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that could work. Or uh, what's uh, He's fucking. A down South guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where, where's Mick Mill from? Philly. Philly? Dude, them motherfuckers be riding dirt bikes and shit on the street. That's they don't true. care neither. Yeah, I feel like you guys would get along. Probably. Yeah. Hell, if we'll just give us two dirt bikes, I'm sure it'll be great. <laughs> Definitely. How, how hard do you party? Dude, I'm one of them people... I will, I will definitely party. I did the other, the other weekend at my house, and I got pretty fucked up. You know? Right. Did some shrooms, smoked some weed, drank some liquor. But I never get to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't control what's going on at my house. Mm. Like, there's a stopping point where I'm like, hell no. Like, if I can't fucking beat these three big motherfuckers up with this stick, then I probably don't want to take any more or smoke <laughs> That's anymore. That's your standard, is if you could beat up three guys with a stick? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's just things you think about. Like, dude, a party in, uh, down south could go bad really quick. Right. Like, 
Dude, yeah, no. Especially on a big farm. But somebody you, get lost, somebody get ran over. You, you know. got security at your house, though, all the time. Yes, 24-7, 365. So you're basically telling me that these country fans don't understand boundaries and they just show up. Well, sometimes, yeah, sometimes. Some of them are, some of them are nice about it. Some of them are like, hey, we just came here from – uh, fucking Illinois to meet him. Uh, is he not here? No. Okay, bye. Dude. Still feels kind of weird, though. You know, it's like even if they have really good intentions, it's still like, you know, you got to respect my space. Like, this is where I lay my head at. Don't oh, show up. 100%. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You have to know that. And that's the thing, dude. I feel like I feel like this happens to a lot of rappers I've seen in the past few years where people think they, they, they are hella approachable and then they end up getting hurt. And it's like, bro, well, you, do, you don't know that this rapper just got a death threat last week yeah. and got his house shut up, and you're trying to fucking, you know, walk up on his front porch, like, hey, yeah. can I come in your house? Fuck no. Like, dude, <laughs> the life some of these rappers live, you know, we're, and anybody who's in the, a public eye, you're always watching your back. You never fucking know. I, I'm sure you've gotten death threats. I mean, I fucking have. Mm. You know, people be like, fuck you, I hate you, da, da, da. and you never know. It could be some crazy person that they're, Girlfriend has your albums on their phone. It mm -hmm. could be somebody that thinks you actually done. I've had so many people say you stole money from me. I'm like fucking where? And it'll be like up church. Somebody like pretending six, to be you. Yeah, yeah getting yeah, yeah. credit card information and shit. Oh my god, the worst one that I ever had was a, a rapper showed up at my old store and uh, my the store employee hits me up and he says, hey, do you have an interview with this dude scheduled or whatever? And I'm like, no, I never heard of him. And he fucking shows him on the phone. Basically, somebody had emailed him, got him to pay $1,500 for an interview, pretending to be me. <clears throat> and then the kid flies to LA, gets a hotel, all this shit, shows up, about to do the interview, and then finds out it's a scam. Damn. I'm like, yo, these scammers are fucked. Fucking heartless, dude. That's per so. What'd you do? Was you like? Mm. <laughs> I didn't do shit. I fucking. I'm like, yeah. Lock the door. <laughs> tell him. Tell him you should check before he fucking does something like that next time. I felt kind of bad, but you know, I can't like give him an interview and like. I, I mean, I never. Here's this it. guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's this dude. <laughs> He's easily fooled. Fuck, dude. That's so bad. I felt so bad for him that he got on a plane to have that experience. Damn, dude. Shout out to that guy. Dedicated as fuck. Oof. Jesus. That's good vlog content. I don't know if he has a vlog channel or anything, but he could have made a good <laughs> vlog out of that. <laughs> I'll be uh, damned, dude. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, okay, what, what were the other times you were on a plane? Hmm. Like, what necessitates you getting on a plane? <laughs> dude, my first show ever was in California. Really? Yeah, it was in Fresno. I wouldn't even call it a show. I stood on the back of an 18-wheeler and, like, <laughs> wrapped off this karaoke thing for a minute. Then lightning struck and caught this field on fire, and everybody started freaking out. I was like, dude. It sounds like a natural disaster every time you perform. <laughs> That's the, pain, the picture you're painting for me. <laughs> every time you perform, like, the gods come down dude, and destroy the earth. <laughs> I told y'all when we got here, I was like, bro, half these stories, he's not going to fucking believe it until he Looks all this shit up somewhere, probably. No, Jesus. man. Yeah, that was my first show. Was in California, like eighteen people. So yeah. you were just mad ambitious, like you got an offer to play this show. You're like, fuck it, I'm getting on the plane. I'm going there. I'm doing this. Yeah, some guy. He was like, man, it's my birthday. He's like, we come out here and rap for us. I was like, fuck yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm on my way. Right. But yeah, it wasn't like a real show though. It was my first like v adventure, mm. like going somewhere, feeling like at the time I felt like I was doing something cool. What do you spend your money on? <sighs> My family, my friends, and I got a couple muscle cars. <laughs> yeah, cars. I've seen you do some videos about the cars and shit. So is that is that like the main thing that's like sapping up uh, profits or? Yeah, well, I dude, I give myself an allowance, bro. Like every time my money comes in a month, I'm like, okay, I'm saving this much. This is for my bills, mm. and here's how much I have for cars. And if there's a car that I want, it's like, you know, three allowances away. I'm like, well, gotta wait till. I get enough money for that car. So mm. I collect cars, but I don't do it to the point where it's like, oh my gosh, like, am I fucking myself over right now? Nah, I make sure I got I got money for my cars and stuff, my toys. Because I don't want to go broke buying all these fucking badass cars and shit. You know what I mean? That'd be kind of stupid. It probably, like, fucking draws a lot of attention around there, though. Like, do you have a good relationship with the police? So they just let you go, like, 130 miles per hour, no problem? <laughs> no, they don't let me go 130 miles an hour anywhere I want to go, but. They're hella good to me. I'll put it that way. They're really? good. To me. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Cheatham County Police. What up, Mike? <laughs> See, that's that's interesting though because when we I, we never have a conversation about rappers and be like, oh yeah, the cops in their city, the Chicago cops, they're real good to those kids. Like they're they're great to them and stuff. You that's ain't kinda... been to the you ain't been to the dirtiest house, baby. <laughs> oh man, 
That's a shame, dude. Yeah, I don't know. Dude, yeah, cops in the country are cool as fuck, dude. It's like a system. Mm. It's like your whole your whole town is a system. You right. know, you know, you you do right, but you know, you do good, you get treated good. You do bad, you get treated bad. I yeah. guess I guess it's kind of like everywhere else, but in the country it's a little bit different because it's you're always pulling over somebody you know right. or you've seen or you have a story with. It's not like you're pulling over some random motherfuckers. You're seeing the same people all the time. Interesting. Yeah. So Young you, Bucket was actually just in jail in Cheatham County <laughs> not too long ago. What did they get him for? I don't know. Free Young Buck. I mean, he's free right now, but free, free him for... Free you again for next time, In the time, future, next time this happens, free him immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, so um, what do you, like, aspire to do going forward? Like, what are the milestones that you could still imagine yourself hitting that you haven't done so far? And how much do you give a fuck? Like, how much is, is, is that something that kind of resonates in your brain frequently? I, I give a fuck because my whole goal since the beginning is to show... Uh, young independent artists that literally anything's possible. You just got to put your mind to it. Aside of that, uh, I've been soaking in a lot of the stuff that's happened in the past two years. Like right now, uh, I, I know you don't know because you're like super famous and you interview a lot of important people. Am but I? right now in my personal in my personal life, I'm just now to the point where I'm like, holy shit, like what did I do? Mm. Like what have I done? What have I created? So I'm, I've been soaking all that in so i haven't really had time to be like okay what are my future goals i'm kind of like just sitting over here in my living room like holy shit mm. like i just left a party at kid rock's house i used to listen to him when i was young like this is crazy wow you know i think the craziest thing that's happened so far that's gave me the most like oomph like holy crap was when uh elton john talked about me on the radio and then played my song i was like what? Are you serious? Elton John? Elton John bro. What and, the and, fuck? and it wasn't like he he just kind of like was like okay here's the song like he stopped on the rocket hour and was like, yo, I found this kid Ryan up church from Nashville. He's 24 years old. Da, 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 da. Starts talking about the blend of like the music I make and then played one of my songs. And I was just like, what? I want to know who put Elton John on or like, does Elton John just kick it on YouTube? Just investigating younger artists. That's interesting. Dude, that is, that is interesting. I'd like to know I'd that just too. love to know how he came up on it. Yeah. Cause dude, I mean, it's fucking Elton John, dude. I wouldn't be able to imagine anything else that Elton John listens to or, like, really almost anything that you could tell me that Elton John was interested in. I'd be pretty surprised just because it seems like he should have been dead a long time ago. No offense <laughs> to him. But he's just, like, ancient as fuck. Like, I can't believe he's still around. He's a legend, dude. Yeah. He's a fucking legend. Right. He's, fuck, he's knighted. <laughs> he's knighted, exactly, yeah. Um, Hey, are you a little Nas X fan? How was all that for you? Were you like, no, the show? I'm been not a moment. little. Listen, bro, I'll tell you the truth. I'm not a little Nas X fan. Really? Why is that? Bro. <laughs> listen, listen. It's it's a good song. Was it's, that song huge in like your world? Like, could you not go to a show without hearing that shit playing and shit? Bro, I, I never heard any of my shows, but you know, it's just one of those things. It's a uh, it's when that came out, I was like, okay, this is they're experimenting. Mm. They they know country rap is popping. You can look it up on YouTube. 40, 50, 60. Hell, I got some that are almost 100 million plays. They got to figure out how to wiggle their way in. And I told I told my team, I was like, bro, if they're going to do this and somebody's going to stick, it's got to be somebody that can prove their country in the lyrics and what they're doing on Instagram. If you have every reason and ability to put your life on there, you can match your life with the music if the music is true. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I seen the Lil Nas X thing, I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna look up some of his shit. I like some of his older shit before the fucking Old Town Road. Really? Sounded way better, way, way better substance and all this other shit. And when I seen the Lil Nas X thing, I was like, damn, that's a catchy ass motherfucker, but I know what they're doing. Yeah. I was like, this is their product of country rap. They're like, okay, country rap. We're going to take this black guy and we're going to put him in fucking Elvis clothes and make him <laughs> sing about a horse and it's going to work. Like, that's literally, that's, that's, that's how I think of it. And it, to me personally, that's that's disrespectful to the black culture. That's disrespectful to country music. That's disrespectful for you know what I'm saying. Like when when you're taking these these elements, you're like we're gonna clash these together and this is gonna sound good. Yeah, it might sound good. It might get a bunch of spins. But how long is that dude actually gonna be around 
to make bread or are you just going to squeeze him for everything he's got and then be like hey motherfucker but you're acting like he isn't in control of his own career because I think that he I like, don't know if he is or not it feels like he made that song like of his own volition because like okay th there's a weird thing that happened where there's another rapper Lil Tracy who's mm -hmm. like much smaller than Lil Nas X but he made this song called Like a Farmer mm -hmm. and that was maybe like six months before or maybe like a year or two before the fucking uh, the Old Town Road thing mm -hmm. came out and I remember like this label that I was uh, cool with them hitting me up and being like yo can you help us get in touch with Lil Tracy like mm -hmm. we, with this like a farmer song like we could push the fuck out of that song rah, rah, rah. and like it, it very much was like the same sort of thing where it was using some like country metaphors and stuff and it had a little bit of a country sound to the song and stuff I mean it, the, the, I, don't, I don't think it's dis disrespectful inherently though like, like I mean at some point it's kind of like it was only a matter of time before you know hip hop type people became mm -hmm. at least interested enough in country to like borrow some sonic elements because mm -hmm. you know we've we've seen it collabing or like like being mixed together before but this was this was almost like a different version because it was like Lil Nas X sort of like playing on the idea of of being country without mm -hmm. like really you know giving a fuck about it or right, whatever right. like it was him like sort of like using it as like a prop to like make like a joke song almost, right you know yeah but once again like like i told you before in the podcast like i try not to watch nothing mm. so i can give so i can look at something and be like okay this is exactly what i think this is not what i think of somebody who follows Lil Nas X or follows, you know, who's affiliated with him. This is just my first reaction. This is what I, I feel when I see it. Mm. That's how I'm perceiving it as somebody who lives in the country and grew up around country music and a little bit of rap music. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure he's a, I'm sure he's a good guy. Hopefully he's got, uh, you know, all this shit on lock. You know what I'm saying? Mm. But you gotta, you gotta think also growing up around Nashville, everybody who goes in those buildings and comes out, like I shoot pool with them, you know, some of these people who write major songs and never get no credibility, this, that, and the other. So I'm on the side of the fence that's like, oh, well, uh, it ain't the side that's like, oh, everything's good, everything's fine. It's more the side like, yo, who's trying to fuck everybody over? Like, mm. who's out to get who? You know what I mean? And when I see somebody like Lil Nas X making so much money and doing so good, I'm like, bro, I hope he's not an experiment. I hope this is actually him. I hope he's having fun doing it, and I hope he's got control of his money and not being used. You know, mm. but that's that's Music City. Yeah. You know, people get used. People fucking they tell you, hey, wear this, do this in your video, and I just hope they aren't doing it. somebody who's doing so good for himself who could fucking literally retire off that song. You know what mm. I'm saying? He could literally retire, do whatever he wants. Right. Do whatever he wants. Do you have that kind of money that you could retire and just say fuck everybody and I'm just gonna chill in my house for the rest of my life? You mean, uh, I hate answer the question. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Like, yeah. Yeah. The income's good. And I'm smart with my money. Right. You don't yeah. seem like you're like spending. Well, I mean, the car thing sounds like it could be oh, expensive. I went to Target before I got here. Did you? Hell yeah. But son. you got icy chain on there too, right? Oh yeah. That's that. Uh, it's a '90s model Mustang emblem. Right. I love Fox Body Mustangs. Right, but are you like a Fox rapper and they're like you're always kind of trying to step up the jewelry? Do you have a huge box of chains at the crib? Fuck no, no I put okay. this shit on to sit with you, bro. <laughs> 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 I was like, man, he's got a bunch of report, bro. Trippy Red me coming on there with all the ice and shit. I was oh, like, yeah, I gotta that, have He's something. the first person that comes to mind because he'll have like a new cartoon character every six months of some crazy shit. That's an interesting dude, man. Yes, that's true, yeah. Dude, he did that whole thing with the fucking orchestra. Mm. Bro, that was sick. And that, like, I only I only know about what gets uh, brought to me by my, around my friend group and stuff. But uh, one, my buddy B was like, "Dude, check this shit out." And it was like he like redid like his rap songs with like an orchestra or some shit. Was that Chief Keef, or was it, did Trippy Red do it too? No, I'm pretty sure that was Trippy Red. Did it? Damn. Uh, he didn't do it. I might have missed that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's oh, and his last music video was sick as fuck, where he's like on that badass horse and shit. Yeah, visuals are insane, dude. He he seems like the kind of person he probably has control over all his visuals and stuff, and he's like pouring out the ideas. Yeah, he's definitely a creative for yeah. sure. Yeah, do you uh, you have a horse? Yeah. How many? One. I'm about to sell that motherfucker. Why? Cause my little brother is supposed to be fucking with it, but he don't really like fucking with it no more. So I tell him get it out of my yard. <laughs> For real? Do you have like a fire ass horse? Like you're into the cars no, and stuff. Dude. You get a really dope horse, or dude, this horse is one of them horses that was like a race horse, and people was like mean to it. So my brother, he was like, "Yo, we gotta get this horse, bro. It's uh, been underprivileged under horse." Yeah. Mm. So he got it fat again, and he's probably gonna sell it. Damn. 
That's crazy. We do got the horses in the back. <laughs> yeah, you got chickens and shit too, like. Man, we used to have a lot of chickens. I don't really know more since my grandfather died. Really? Yeah, it I got a, a actually. Lot. I have a rooster tattooed. A lot of people that don't know about chickens thinks it's a fucking pigeon, but it's because it has the, the the comb cut off. Damn. In chicken fighting, you cut the comb off so the other chicken can't grab it and fuck your chicken up. Really? You got the famous logo there too. That's fine. Dude, I got that when I was 15. Really? Yeah. It was it was one time the only tattoo on here. I gotta take a picture of something Travis Barker. Do it. You'll probably it. appreciate it. You'll probably send the box through. <laughs> Dude, I love famous stars and straps. Dude, I gotta show you this video of this song called Chicken. Show me. You're going to shit your pants. You're not going to believe this video when oh you see God, it. God, this is this it. fucking kid who, like, it's a dance song from a few years ago of mm -hmm. this dance, and the dance is called The Chicken. Oh, shit. I'm not going to try to do it because it's. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm not going to show you while we're doing this because yeah, this you're is straight. too much. You're going to lose your fucking mind, dude. Um, okay, so what, what else you got planned while you're out here? COVID. Nothing, it's going to be fucking shit up for you, huh? No, not really. No touring, just in the crib. Uh, well, I got a lot of stuff. I could do when we're not touring like ride boilers and fucking you know do shit in the woods hang out fucking you know shit like that hang out with my buddies you know I just had dog face uh, 208 the fucking Mexican dude who was on the skateboard drinking the cranberry oh, juice yeah, and shit oh yeah I seen that yeah you know, I just had him on and he was talking about he's how a whole vibe he dude. was living in a tent and he didn't give a fuck. He was having a good old time living in the tent. And then he like was he blew up on TikTok, started making real money. He's in a house now. But I mean, he was talking about it like he would not mind at all if he was still living in the tent. And then you kind of you're talking about the trailer like the trailer is just fine. I feel like we're having some good humble guests who are like reminding us that material shit don't matter. Which you you need that reminder in L.A. from time to time. Yeah, well, like you know. That's why I tell all these kids on YouTube, I'm like, yo, when you start making money, you know, you're going to go through your phase where you're like, I want to buy all this shit. Especially if you grow up and, you know, you didn't have a car when you were 16. Mm -hmm. Or if you did, it was a fucking hoopty, you know what I'm saying? And when you have enough money to buy some shit, yeah, it makes you want to go buy some shit. But, dude, don't go overboard because you'll find out real quick that buying all that shit brings around all the fucking wrong people, baby. Mm -hmm. And that's for sure. And then when you go through this phase where everybody's like, hey, can I borrow your car? Hey, can I ride in your Lamborghini? Or hey, can I do this? You'll be like, yo, fuck all this shit. <laughs> and you'll, you'll, you'll have this weird crisis, and then you'll get rid of a bunch of shit, and then you'll be good until it happens next time. <laughs> right. Yeah, I bought a grill. And I wore it like two times. And for real? I was like, this is just not for me. Yeah. Fuck yes, dude. Like eight grand on that thing. You look like you should have a cool vampire fucking one with two like fang teeth right here. There's a point in your life where you just sort of realize like, oh, I guess like my like 30 year old white guy in is kind of like <laughs> keeping this girl from really working. Like I'm not Paul Wall. You know, if you're Paul Wall. Okay. Dude, he, he got the grills, baby. Paul Wall, that's who you should work with. Bro, I would do I would do a song with Paul Wall for sure, dude. Paul Wall, I could see he wouldn't see the vision, I think. You like Gorilla Zo? Gorilla Zo was tight. I haven't dude. thought about it much in like twenty years, but yeah. <laughs> see, I see I'm still stuck in the, you know, Mike Jones on the playlist, Paul Wall on the playlist, fucking Slim Thug, yeah, you know, juvenile Chame millionaire, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you and juvenile together, that'd be hard. Mm -hmm. Bro, right now I'm just ready to mingle, dude. I'm right. Hey, any of y'all people out there want a country ass friend? Holla at your boy. Mm. I will come chill, dude. You a Theo Vaughn fan? Bro, Theo Vaughn, what's up, you crazy motherfucker? Yeah, <laughs> I, I know Theo. He's cool as fuck. Oh, you do know him? Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah, I feel like you guys are kind of similar in that you're both people who like realized that being a country ass motherfucker was like a thing <laughs> that you could kind of like Which sell money back to people this. a bit yeah 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 i was like oh i don't have to go act like i'm from fucking new york i can just like yeah. be who i really am and these motherfuckers perfect will like me timing. for it you know perfect timing Makes i actually sense. sent him a fucking i sent him a video the other night and this motherfucker messaged me back like one in the morning he's he's in his bed this little mullet flicking he's got his covers up he goes i've never woke up at one o'clock in the morning to Message back another man while I'm in bed, but what's up? Like, <laughs> you goofy fucker. Yeah, you never He's, did the mullet? Mm-mm. Never did the mullet. I did the mohawk. Mm. I'd grow this mug out and fucking both sides. Me and my buddy, every summer we'd have a big-ass mohawk. But like a mohawk that's like this long, right? Not like a fucking spiked up punk rock oh, mohawk, dude. right? I've had a mohawk that was like seven inches long. I just let it flop to the side. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound good. I'm gonna be honest with you. Hey man, but but hey, if you're wearing a hat, you could appear like you have hair, or you could push it up in there and appear like you don't. I mean, you're just at the house. Like, who the fuck is there going to be to judge who you? Cares, right? Yeah. Fuck it. All right. 
<laughs> hey, this was, this was a good talk, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I had a good talk, too. Yeah, for sure. Um, hopefully, maybe we, we could find out what they want you to talk about that you haven't talked about on this episode, and maybe mm. we could run it back someday or something like that. Maybe I'll yeah. open, open the Rolodex. Maybe we just hit up Young Buck. Let's do it for the local pride, dude. Yeah, I'm down with you whatever. You never had a dude. conversation with him? Yeah, I've had a conversation with Buck. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've had a few conversations with him. That's what's Not up. nothing like too in depth or anything, you know. Mm. We fuck with the same, we fucked with the same people for a minute, but nothing like, hey, can I come over your house? Like nothing like that. Interesting. Yeah. Oh. Okay, Ryan Upchurch, no jumper. See Coolest you guys podcast in the world. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Chicken, chicken, <laughs> chicken, chicken. <laughs> you wait till you see this. <laughs> Let me see this shit.